he's got to cooperate with the senior management team and with colleagues, with everybody. That's collaboration, you know, and he's willing to uh, to support school initiatives and to come with ideas and share them with colleagues so that they would be um, shared by everybody. Having a cross curricular team, you know, being shared in a topic, for example, you're discussing the science teacher is doing about water, the English teacher doing comprehension exercises on water, the music teacher doing something uh, related to water, um, the physics teacher, the other teachers, the mathematics teachers, the, uh, they, they do volumes, you know. Why? Because they each one supports one the other. You know, having the cross-curricular team, it would benefit the teachers themselves in the various subjects and also the students because you get reinforcement about the different aspects of the topic, okay, by different teachers. And thus, a student will be more um, in a position to learn differently from different teachers. To get support, first of all, at school, in my school, we've got what are called the subject meetings. The sciences, the teachers of sciences, which include the science, the general science, the physics, the chemistry, the biology, they meet regularly every week. The mathematics teachers, they meet as well. The languages, the languages, uh, local languages and the foreign languages, they meet. Therefore, through these, through these meetings, they share ideas and then we get regular uh, staff meetings and uh, we, the SMT, we discuss these ideas so that all of them, the stakeholders, would own these ideas. And that's what I believe is collaboration, that uh, an idea is shared by everybody and everybody gives his input. You've got to have personal management. Why? Because uh, you've got to know your staff, you've got to know them, you know their weaknesses, their good points, and you work on their good points and you try to sell them your ideas or else the ideas of the whole school. About a couple of years back, two or three years ago, we reintroduced vocational education as a, an alternative learning program. Why? For we get students that at the age of 16, they do not uh, obtain what are called the ordinary level exams results, which are the final exams, you know, a sort of a certification and uh, we introduced this idea of an alternative learning program. I gathered around a number of teachers in the various specialities, okay, and uh, they collaborated and we saw that these students which were being pushed out from school because I believe that uh, no one size fits all in education, we tend to push out students. We don't call them dropouts because it's our fault. The system pushes some students out. They don't see the value of school. Therefore, with this program, which was um, owned by several teachers, those teaching welding, those teaching woodwork or carpentry, sheet metal bench fitting, um, personal and social education, career exposure, um, some literacy, some basic numeracy related to the world of work, you know, they, say they saw a value to it. Therefore, all the teachers involved, they said, okay, we tried this, the students were enjoying it, it was close collaboration, and I must say it was quite a good success.